Hello and welcome to the Petticoated Swashbuckler. My name is Marin, and uh, winter is upon us, at least here in Norway. It's getting pretty chilly, and I'm going to tell you about my winter project. So, just going to put my teacup away. So, um, next spring. It's not too early to start looking forward to spring, is it? I love winter and I love Christmas, but anyway, next spring, I am attending a ball, a Victorian ball. Uh, and uh, I have just realized that with my day job and uh, Christmas presents that I want to get made before Christmas I really need to get started uh, on preparing for that ball. The ball is it's a Victorian ball in Bath and it's if you know prior attire that she's um, the organizer at least one of the organizers the main organizer is my impression uh, and the dates for the ball is between 1837 and 1849 so we're gonna do some 1840s now I have very little 1840s I have done like late 1820s I've done 18 early 1860s uh, nothing really in the middle so I've started to prepare and one of the ways I started to prepare is by buying this this is also my t-shirt. Um, this is a massive quilted, like, it's like a quilt for your bed. Um, it's big and it's fluffy and it's 100% cotton, so it breathes really lovely. And uh, I bought this used, so it's been on someone's bed. Um, I've had it cleaned, uh, dry cleaned, and I'm gonna make a petticoat out of it. So that's one of my plans. I'm gonna make, you know, those beautiful quilted petticoats just to get that sort of, because in the 18, I'm gonna go for circa 1840 with my, my outfits for this ball. Um, and in 1840, the, the, the shape of the dresses, it's got that very sort of um, bell-like shape, but it's not as sort of structural as it is in the 1850s and 1860s. You don't have that crinoline yet. So I'm gonna try and create that shape by using this and just like pleating it um, into a waistband. So yeah, very excited about that. Before I get to that though, I'm gonna make a chemise and I'm gonna make a corset. And I have kind of snuck a star to the, to the chemise. I have cut all the pieces and I am I prepared to do some embroidery so this is going to be like the front yoke of the chemise and I'm gonna make some embroidery on it because why not because I have all the time in the world don't I um, so I'm very excited to get started with that I have got a pattern for my corset I haven't got the fabric for that yet uh, so that's on my agenda and when I'm done with that, when I have my shift, when I have my corset, when I have my <sighs> potentially quite heavy uh, quilted petticoat, um, I'm ready to start my dresses. I always start from the inside out. And uh, this time, I'm going to take you along with me. If you want to. So I'm done embroidering. And I'm pretty happy with the result. So this is uh, this is the yoke, the front yoke. Uh, I've also embroidered the sleeve cuffs. So this is the front yoke. Um, I used a chain stitch, uh, just making some waves and some loops, adding a couple of little mulefleur um, flowers. And um, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I think it'll look very elegant and nice. 
I've also done the, the sleeve cuffs, um, two of them, and I just added a little, a little bouquet of flowers on each, on each sleeve, and I'm, I'm very happy with these. I think they look dainty. They look a little bit like tambour work, which is the look I was going for. So that's great. Um, so what I think I'll do now is I will uh, I will take the front and the back because there's there's two very like straight up and down pieces um, that will make up the main body of the chemise uh, and I will gather those, make gathering stitch lots along the top so I can sew those onto the yoke, the front yoke and the back yoke which I have not embroidered I'll do the same with the sleeves. I will finish, I'll make um, gathering uh, stitches on the, both the kind of the edge that's going towards my shoulder and uh, the edge that I'm going to attach to here. So I think that's what I'm gonna start by doing. Lots and lots of gathering stitches. Okay, so this is the sleeve, um, and I'm using, I haven't said that yet, but I'm using the Black Snails uh, 1840s underwear pattern, I'll link that. Um, this is kind of the, the edge that's going up towards the shoulder, and then this bit, which is kind of angled down, it's not that easy to see, the light here is not brilliant. Um, this is going sort of down towards your your elbow uh, and this is where our little embroidered cuff thing should be sewn onto it can you see that this kind of matches up the angle on the cuff with the angle on the sleeve so what I think I'll do now is I will gather this up onto the sleeve cuff uh, and stitch that then I think the instructions say to like turn it turn the seam allowance towards the cuff side and then stitch that down so I'll probably do that and when I'm done with that I can stitch the cuff lining to the cuff uh, and yeah and then turn that up and attach it. I'll probably do the last seam there by hand. Um, so yeah, I think that's it. I think I'll finish the sleeves first before moving on to the body. Let's do some sewing.
So this is one sleeve, nearly done, um, with a little flower on. Uh, I have stitched the uh, cuff lining to the cuff. Uh, I'm now just going to go in and hand stitch it to uh, the seam allowance on the inside of the cuff. Uh, does it really matter that I hand sew this bit? Not really. Uh, will anyone actually see my <laughs> my shimmy sleeves? Well, yes, because I'm showing them off to you, but otherwise, no. Um, it's only because I made a line here, as it said in the instructions. Hang on. There we go. I made a line, a row here of machine stitching, and I don't. I don't want more than one line of machine stitching and I don't trust my machine stitching enough that I will actually hit the same line twice. So I'm actually going to go in, hand stitch this down and um, it's fun. I like hand stitching, as you know. And then once the leaves done and I can go on to the next one. I am realising uh, the longer I work with this, I mean, I this cuff is double thickness and it is still I don't know if it's, it's almost see-through. Look, you can see my, you can see my fingers here. Look, uh, <laughs> and most of this dress is not double layer; it's single layer, and then it's really see-through. So I'm starting to realise this, uh, this chemise will not be. How do you say it? Uh, PG. Um, it, it's likely to be very, 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 very sheer. Um, I might actually, so sheer I might actually have to wear something under it to show it off to you. Uh, not might, I, I will have to, because look at this, it is extremely, extremely see-through. Um, but on the other hand, this, I mean, it's a thin cotton voile. It's going to be so comfy. Uh, it's going to be the most comfortable undergarment uh, in the universe. Just um, slightly uh, uh, a nudie C. So there's that. So I'm going to do this, hands I mean, and then I'm going to go over to the next sleeve, and then we'll see if we have time to go on to the body of the dress, of the underdress today, or if we have to do that some other day. Maybe. We'll see. It's getting kind of late. Well, it's the next day. Excuse my very unmade up face. Um, and I finished the sleeves yesterday, as you saw. Now it's time to move on to the yoke. Um, and the yokes will, they're similar for front and back on the pattern. And you kind of, I'm supposed to sew them together at the shoulders. And then I will gather the bodies or the body of the, the chemise to the lower end here and then I'll gather the sleeves to this bit and then as you might notice uh, this does not nearly go under my arms apparently there's supposed to be like a, a, a gusset uh, a square gore um, that's gonna be kind of making up that last bit under the sleeves 
Uh, and I'm very used to using underarm gauze when I make underwear. Uh, I I used uh, some for the um, uh, the chemise for my Anne Bamford project. I can link that video somewhere. Uh, um, I was a bit surprised that the underarm gussets are still a thing in the 1840s. Um, but they are very comfortable and they work like a charm, so why not? So I'm going to stitch together the shoulders. This is the lining for the yoke. I also have the like the fancy yoke that I've whoop, that I've embroidered. Uh, so just going to stitch those together at the shoulders, and then I'm going to stitch the lining to the outer yokes along what will be kind of my neckline, um, and turn that. And then I think we're ready to start gathering the chemise onto the yokes. body and the sleeves attached to the yoke. Uh, it's a very uh, <laughs> indecent and airy garment at the moment because I now need to sew down, sew together the sleeves and the sides of this garment. But it's really nice, I really like it. I, I feel like I want to start wearing it as a sort of summer dress because, yeah, I don't know, it's just so airy and lovely. But as you can see, it's very, very see-through. Um, but I am very happy. I think it's very cute, very elegant. Um, I think what I'm going to do now is actually first I'm going to go and sit down somewhere, um, make myself a nice cup of tea, and then attach the the lining, the facing of the yoke because f now it's just like a loose layer of fabric. So I'm going to stitch that down like I did the cuffs of the sleeves and then I can start attaching the underarm gauze. I'm going to, I'm going to show them to you. Um, these, are, these are my gauze so they will kind of be placed like this. Um, so I think that'll work really well. My one worry is that it is a little narrow um, at the hem. I'm a little bit worried I won't actually be able to like move in it as well as I want to. Because even though it looks like there's quite a lot of fabric up here, um, it's, it's very straight down and there's no uh, like triangle gauze at the side. So I might just add that 
um, I'll try it, see if it works. And if it doesn't, I'll just add some triangles to add a little bit of width to the hem. But yeah, I'm going to do some hand sewing and then I'll come right back to you when it's time for these baddies. I have been making underwear with underarm gauze for at least 10 years. I have never really found them too fiddly to work with until now. I mean, they're all right, but these were so fiddly to get in. Um, because what I usually do when I make underwear with these kind of square underarm gauze is that I I sew them to I sew the sleeves to the uh, shoulder you know like I've done here and then I sew the underarm gauze in and then I sew the side seams and the sleeve seams and then I adjust the sleeves however here the sleeves were done and uh, the f on first try I <laughs> I actually ended up with like one side of my sleeve poking out like several centimeters beyond, <laughs> beyond the other side uh, like way too much for me to just sort of kind of tricks it to work so I had to unpick it which I hate doing uh, especially because this fabric is so thin uh, it falls apart if you look at it hard um, especially before you encase all the raw edges um, and then I actually what I ended up doing was actually uh, baste them in and then machine stitch them in and then stitch the underarm seam and the side seams. I have also lain all the seams. Um, let's see if I can show you. So I've sewn the like the main seams on the machine, but then I have folded them twice to hide the raw edges and then hand stitched them down. I have yet to iron this, which is why it looks a bit well, kind of wobbly. Um, and this is just because this is going to be the innermost garment on my body. I want it to be comfortable. I need it to not be a lot of kind of sticky outy seams that can rub against my body, um, giving me uncomfortable uh, wounds. I've actually had that happen where I had a very hard, sort of, sort of sh almost sharp edge uh, inside one of my underwear garments, and then I wore a corset on top, and I actually got like a proper wound. Like there was skin missing and there was blood. Uh, so I'm eager to avoid that. Um, it's almost done. I'm just gonna hem the bottom. Hem the hem. I'm just doing that really simply by hand. Um, and then it's done. And it's on to the next garment.